Hello, everyone. It's uh, Joe Lyons here out of Dallas, Texas. Yeah, and Jackie here from Copenhagen, Denmark. Yeah, Jackie, I was just saying this is the this is the fifty sixth webinar. You, you 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 should be expecting that, man. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. <laughs> Um, so, uh, as I think most of you guys know, so we're just getting started here, but, um, there are, that we had, uh, actually, you know, I didn't, I don't remember if I actually updated that. I think we had a couple more. Um, I'll have to go look at that, but, um, I think a few more people registered and, and we don't expect everyone here, right? Cause it's a, it's a global thing and the timing and stuff. Um, but it's great to see us growing. Um, part of it might be our guest presenter today, uh, Rodolfo, uh, is going to present on the pullover macro recorder, which is pretty amazing. Yeah. Um, maybe that's you know part of it. That's awesome. And uh, so everyone starts off muted, not because we want to be all that. It's just because when you get more than two, maybe three people talking, it's mayhem. Um, so if you have a question, <clears throat> you know, put it in the chat or um, just in the chat, say you have a question and then, you know, that you want to be, and then, you know, we'll wait for a good time to ask your question, right? So just don't interrupt people left and right. But um, let's uh, go ahead and keep moving forward. Um, so these last, these two webinars, Jackie, this one, this was that podcast where you, uh, you showed me how to use shell hooks and how easy it was. I, I still think that was, that was a spot on amazing podcast. Uh, very cool to see just how simple they were to work with, with that class. Was it a class? I think yeah, you it found was a it. class. Yeah. <clears throat> and then, um, we had one just kind of showing automating texting with push bullet and I've been, um, using that a lot lately for my business it's been great um, and now the really cool thing and let me let me put while we're here on this page i'm going to put all copy all these and put them in the chat here so you guys have them but um we actually finally got serious about our podcast and now it's uh it's a real podcast so um we have a, a place you can go and you know add them I, I don't know if it's in the iphone stuff yet i think it's supposed to take a while to, to show up but i published the first one today uh, but if you go to the, the automators dot buzz buzzes, oh, buzz sprout. Okay. I'm like buzzes sprout um, dot com. Um, you can start listening to them. And the other one that I'll say is that Jackie and I are doing our best. It's a little bit, two things I'd say is slightly different with what we're planning to do with the automators podcast instead of, and the, the hint is part of it's in the name is even though we're probably still 99% of the time talking about auto hotkey, we're doing our best to not limit it to you know how to program an auto hotkey, right? We're talking more, a little bit vaguer, but about programming and learning to program and you know your best practices stuff. Um, the first we've done, we've recorded because we have a queue of them. We have I think five so far, Jackie. Is that sound right? Yeah, um, something like that. Yeah. But um, you know, the other one is we're, which which I'm really we're both very happy at because both of us can just kind of drift where we're going. We, we, we start off with like bullets and we talk to the bullets and it keeps us much more focused. So I think the, not quality, I mean, the value people will get will just be higher because we, we, we stay on topic more. Um, so I, I'm really glad, I, I, I've really enjoyed the ones we've done recently. Um, I, I enjoyed all of them, but when we finish, we don't go, crap, how did we end up here? You know, like it, it's been really good at, at, at keeping us focused. Yeah, it, it's shortened them a bit as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, now, I, I did want to put in these two. These are just two other things that I just recently, I thought this was, and, and I know, Jackie, we're going we're gonna to do a couple podcasts on this topic, but um, I released a, a video with the document on, you know, 17 ways to automate uh, Windows programs with AutoHotKey. And it, uh, it actually ties in really well with this next one, which I know we'll, we'll have on the podcast as well. But in it, I had talked about how, you know, there's really kind of two main ways you automate stuff with AutoHotKey. One is replicating a human actions like mouse clicks and, you know, looking for an image and doing this and that and sending keystrokes. And then there's kind of like an API approach. And so um, <clears throat> when I, I'd even say, watch this one first, and then this one will make even more sense. Uh, but when, when Jackie and I, we talk to people and help people, they'll ask us, Hey, I'm, I'm trying to work in this script and I'm sending keystrokes in not that there's something, anything terrible about sending keystrokes. It's just, they're not the most robust in from this second video here. When I really kind of realized like, this is why we go with this approach. It would really help you kind of think through like why we keep stressing calm or controls um, or an API or whatever versus sending mouse clicks and keystrokes. Um, so 
Uh, both, of these, both of these, I think, are very good ones. This one in particular, because people will ask me, well, how should I connect to it? I'm like, well, there's, there's a lot of different ways. Um, but we didn't have, we had two webinars that we did, Jackie, discussing various ways to connect to, to programs. Um, mm -hmm. But we didn't really try to explain all, you know, all of them and go into them. Now, in this document, um, I have a lot of hyperlinks to, to videos, to forum posts, to source code like from Microsoft about the technology, um, plus videos and webinars or you know whatnot. So it's it's a very robust uh, uh, document that you can use to kind of learn some of these things. And it's not that you have to know all of them, but just know that they exist, right? It's the first step. And then after that, starting to learn which ones to try and when. But you know, you know, I mentioned in the video at some point I would love to create a tool, one tool that we could like drag to the program or the the control whatever it is you're trying to connect to and it would help tell you hey here's here are you know alternative here are approaches you could use and then have some sort of rank order to that of like hey if comms available you know use calm if it's not maybe you know controls or whatnot but yeah um yeah mm -hmm. um now here now and, and, and i again i'm gonna apologize but I'm, I'm gonna apologize and i'm gonna uh i'm trying to think of the right way to phrase it um i've actually gotten to where the, uh, the, the mentorship, the automated data is now finally in a spot where I can assign the people in, in Isaiah's, I, I finally worked through, you won't believe how complex this was to connect mentors with mentees. Um, but for those of you who haven't joined yet, um, consider getting a mentor. There, there are great, you know, great ways to learn more. Um, and, and I would have done it this week, but with all the power outages and stuff, it's been crazy, but um, I'm, I'm right on that. Cusp of the, the problem is we have like four to one people wanting a mentor versus mentors. So if you're in a position where you can actually help people with anything, right, sign up to be a mentor as well as if you want to learn something, right. So it's a great thing to, to be able to do. Um, I, I can't tell you how much it helps talking and working with someone, having a go-to person to help you. It's just it's indescribable. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it it's really great. Also, if <laughs> You might be not alone with your outer hot key or whatever automation you make, but just the idea, I remember at least that I was the only person I knew that was making scripts or trying to automate stuff. So it was really, really nice to actually be talking to someone who also did that, not just writing on a forum or wherever. So yeah, uh, just that alone can be yeah. very we actually, I was, I was having a call with, um, I'm scanning here, uh, and I, I'm blanking on his name. It's um, Alessandro uh, out of Italy, and uh, we had had a call. I had a call planned with him that morning just to discuss some of the stuff he was doing, and then Isaiah and I were wrapping up the call, and I'm like, Isaiah, why don't you hang out and and just you know we'll you know join the call. I don't think anyone cares. So we ended up talking for another over, I think, an hour, and discussing a lot of different things. And, and what was really, to me, really fascinating about it was during that call, all three of us learned different things from each other during that call, right? And Isaiah said, like, if you've seen him, he, he is, he's Raptor X in the forum uh, and in YouTube, and uh, or no, HK Toots on YouTube. But um, he, he is so far beyond me programming-wise, um, it's crazy. And yet, even then, even when I'm doing stuff with, with Isaiah, I think of things very differently. And the great thing to me about him is, he, uh, he lets me kind of say, what about this? And, and it gets him to think of new things. And so we, we, we all, you don't have to find someone that's necessarily better than you. It's just someone who thinks differently, right? And sometimes that alone helps you, you know, think outside the box, so to speak. Yeah. And if you're able to actually talk together, just the idea of not using written language can actually be quite a thing. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and the other thing is it's really fun, right? Like yeah. you realize you have a lot in common and it is really great to just have someone to, to bounce ideas off and stuff. So, uh, so anyway, sign up very soon. I'll be starting to make connections. Um, and the, for those of you who are mentors, um, if, if you're here and I got, I got to email them, but if, if you want more than one student that, you know, let me know. Um, and I say student, you know, mentee, but um, I'm trying to figure out how do I connect? You know, should I connect one to one? I think sometimes it might be more than one or maybe, you know, anyway, I, this is what I haven't really worked through of like, how do I deal with the 
four to one, four mentees to every one mentor. Cause I didn't tell mentors like, Hey, you're going to throw a bunch of people at you. Right. I don't want to do no. that. No. Yeah. But um, yeah, if you're open to having more than one person, um, let me, let me know proactively. Cheers. Right. So um, the, uh, the last month I featured, Oh yeah. It was the set clipboard by scan also. And I happened to just be going through the forum again. And I found this OSD tip, um, and it was really interesting. Let me uh, start studio here. Hopefully, it, my computer crashed, so I don't know if it, oh good, it's still here. <clears throat> um, and it's just a cool function. Let me comment this out, and we'll start up here on this one. So I'm going to launch it now. When I hit my hotkey, notice this little notification down here, right? Yeah. So that's that's this usage right here. It's nothing nothing fancy, uh, but that's just one usage. This next one um, here, he's he's showing a clock, right? So you can see how different that looks, right? Compared to the last one I just did. Uh, that, that was a, a neat one. Um, this next one though, this Marquet kind of thing, um, I thought that was really neat. And you can easily see the speed of this thing scrolling. Like if I change this to be 340, see how much slower that's going now so it's, yeah. it's yeah, that's adjusting the speed of it um again what would i use that for i don't know um uh, just to, to kind of let people know something's going on uh, i just thought that was a pretty cool example this one was interesting um so when it, it shows you like if i turn on and off the caps locks it's displaying it or the scroll lock where where's my oh no, i'll use the num lock but you can see it you know visible representation of it right so hmm. That's these. Uh, this one and this one, I had to I had to check it out because here it starts off muted. So I'm going to end up. Oh, and there goes my power. Um, I'm going to start off muted here. Uh, but I'm going to run this. So there we go. Now I'm not muted, right? Um, no. But if I do the up or down volume, it's changing how that this you know it's showing me a visual thing of it. Nice. Do you still hear me? Yeah. 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 Oh, I can't hear you. Oh. Somehow I lost my sound. Let me exit out of the script. That's interesting. Oh, no. It... Try Is to get it. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so when it was read, it was actually muted, apparently. What? Oh, it's not muting. It's, well, it's, it's muted. It's both. Did it actually mute me? No, we could hear you all the time. It's muting the audio. That's funny. Oh, oh okay. Yeah, that's a that needs to be renamed. Um, or even then, that's an interesting way to mute. Uh, that's hilarious. I'm like, why can't I hear anybody? Yeah, I'm, I'm muting you guys. That yeah. would be kind of funny that to give to people. You're like, here, you can use this to mute, but it's it's just people. You think you can't hear them, and it's the wrong <laughs> way, right? <laughs> Actually, this one, this last one, I don't think it worked for me for some reason. Yeah, it's it in the image on the thing it showed it popped up with his username like whoever you are, and how long your thing has been up and running. Um, but let's okay. not worry. I I I I went and got the second this user sorry this function and threw it in here, but um, I didn't test it. Like I, I've been doing all this the the last couple seconds here. So um, I will let's see. Did I put? Yes, I did. Put this into the chat. We put a name of oops. Thank you. Scan caps lock is on. Um, on screen display tip. Cool. Okay, so we've cruised through that. Now for the exciting part, what everyone's waiting for. Um, we're going to jump in with pullover. Now, before pullover starts, I didn't tell him I was going to do this, but, um, you know, actually, well, maybe he'll tell us here in a second. I'm very curious how old the tool actually is, because I remembered when I first started using Auto Hotkey at least 10 years ago. I, I'm pretty sure if it wasn't right then, maybe it was a year or two after where it was available, because I remember playing with it. And the very first time when I started learning Auto Hotkey code, um, I tried the tool. Um, so I'm very curious on it, but here are, um, you can help if you're interested, if you ever have used the tool and have benefited from it, he has a donate button. Um, the other one is, is the link I'm gonna put in here is to subscribe to his YouTube channel. Hmm. 
So of course, you know, as always, if, if you've benefited, and, and, and I know from talking to him, the, you know, if you can't afford it, it's the same thing with me too. Don't ever send me money if you can't afford it, right? Like I don't want, I don't want money if, you know, if you can't afford it, but if you can afford it, Hey, send me money. I don't mind. Send him money. <laughs> send Jackie money. Anyway. Everybody. Yeah. Everybody gets a car. Yeah. Yeah, everyone send me. We'll be, I'll pretend like I'm the U.S. government. Like, just, let's just bail money to everybody. Um, yeah, we like to get paid for our for, 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 for work, right? <laughs> right. Well, that's the thing. Like, you know, and if, it, if you find it helpful, then, hey, you know what? To me, and this is where being more of a capitalist, like, I think of this going, when I do get, you know, people give me money, I am much more prone to actually go back and do even more, improve what I did, right? Like, it's it's very rewarding. And I go, Oh, you know, it's just a, it's a natural kind of carrot. You're like, Oh, you know what? That was cool. I didn't mind getting, and it doesn't have to be much, right. But every little bit helps. So with that, uh, Rodolfo, I think I put your, yeah. But Batista, am I saying that right? Okay. Yes. Batista. That's right. Cool. Um, do you now, I don't know if you want to start sharing your screen. Um, and demonstrate and or like first off when when did uh pullovers macro creator come into being like when did you create it first release was on 2012 i think april 2012 i think yeah it, it started like a very uh not ambitious project it's a very simple interface i uh the, the, the start behind it, I was working for a company uh, and I had to, to go through, through their software, to many, many windows to generate reports. I thought there's got to be a better way to do that. So I started searching for tools and all of them was uh, commercial tools, very expensive. Uh, until I found all about key and I found, well, that's great. I can script things and I learned, I, I didn't know and much about programming at, at the time. Uh, I did. So I started learning it and, and oh, it's simple. I can write a script to, to make the strokes. Uh, firstly, I, I wrote a few scripts to, to do what I wanted. I thought, well, maybe there could be an interface where I could just type in the, the, the keystrokes commands and, and it would record it and, and re, uh, reproduce it. That's how I started. So I make a really simple, simple interface and thought oh, I could add a run command because it, it was good because AutoHotKey allows you to use uh, dynamic stuff and variables. All, all those things was new to me at the time. So, oh, that's great. I, I wrote a simple interface and I thought, oh, let's share it and create a talk, a thread and, and forum. And it uh, became popular very, very soon, very quickly. And people started to, to give su suggestions and it was started to grow. And it came version two, three, version four, five, and I'm working on version six now. At the time, uh, I had things from, from my head and things that mostly, most of the features were suggested by users, on, mostly on the forum. And it's uh, still going. I've been away from the project for about four years from 2006, six, 2016, and I took a project in 2020, last year. And I plan to release at least one major version this year. That I hope might come out uh, next month. Cool. Hmm. Do you have any idea of uh, how many users? Uh, sorry, I think my internet. Is <laughs> no, I think it's actually Joe's. That's maybe. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we are unsure what you're trying to ask, Joe, because something with your sound yeah. is off. I stopped my video. Maybe that'll help. I was just curious if you know how many downloads or users. I can get this from the download website and see. I didn't prepare myself for this because I was doing so much stuff <laughs> today. But I can see here. 
Um, it's currently the install is hosted on SourceForge. I think I have the data here. Um, it's been a little, being downloaded about three three thousand downloads a week. That's that's a fair amount. <laughs> yeah, it's well, you, uh, and there is also from from the downloads from GitHub. I don't don't know where to see that right now. Uh, you can see it's insights. it's by far the most most viewed thread on the AutoHot Key website. Mm -hmm. See, it has the I think the most view the second one I think it's uh, that function uh, uh, text to, or is it let me sort it here by views it's fine text fine text the second one it has around 200,000 use and uh, macro creator has like seven hundred over seven hundred thousand so it's very popular although it's yeah. not a tool for learning auto hotkey it's uh, an automation tool itself it's very popular in the web in the form yeah but it it can make a lot of sense i remember back in the day when the I don't even remember what it's called. Not a hotkey writer or something like that was included with the download, which was also just a small macro recorder, which was asked for for years after it was removed. So yeah, recorders are uh, really sought after. Yeah, and, and along the way, other scripts came because I wanted to add functions to the project. Someone just Adam Chadet uses the evolve function a lot. Evolve was something I worked a lot for to evaluate expressions inside strings, something I needed in the project. Uh, other scripts like the toolbar class is very popular as well. It all came because I wanted to try the features to, to GMC, and those are my other contributions to the community. Yeah, yeah. I, I like to ask maybe uh, the people here who many have actually used uh, your creation for Lord's macro creator. Anybody? Sorry, you are asking me, I didn't understand, sorry. No, I just asked the group. Like, oh, okay. uh, um, Lani is saying he tried it, Dale has not yet. Uh, Ali has Ali, so yeah, it's a it's a good mix probably. Oh, yeah. It's probably not very popular among auto hotkey. I, I think I think it's a little bit more. Uh, sorry, Joe. What did you say? I was going to say I, it looks like we should have a, a good little demo here of just walking through what it is. Hmm. That might be a good idea. Can you can you do that? Um, Show the program. Sure, I didn't prepare anything, but I can share it here. Let's see. Okay, so this is the latest version released. Uh, well, most people come here and what. It, Calls attention first is the, the recorder. It has a built-in recorder. It can is, record. Is this the standard view? Is it how it looks when you started the first time? Yes, it has some other con uh, configurations for the two bars. That's the the standard view we have here. It has some compact layouts too, which you can change. But this is the the recommended one. Mm -hmm. So, uh, most people get, uh, it's not, like I was saying, it's not very, very popular among people who are already used to our hotkey, because well, if you know how to, to write, it's, you, you're better, probably better off writing your own script. But 
PMC can also be, be useful to, to get syntax more easily because you, you don't have to remember all, all, all things you want. Mm. Uh, for example, it has uh, this, this toolbar here has the commands available. Yeah. So you can add uh, types of mouse commands. You can click, move and click. You can use this to, to find uh, exactly coordinate where to, to click. You can change the, the chord mode. You have here the, some information on chord mode used here. Set to window, title mats, send, send mode. Those are things that you can, can configure here in settings. And so on, have, so you can add text commands, plain text, text of commands, and other options. Uh, great feature that's very useful is uh, the window for control commands. Uh, you can use this button here to find a control available in the app. I um, don't know if I have one here with something like that. It shows here, you see the, the, the toolbar will show the name of the control. Mm -hmm. So I just right click and grab the control name, or you can set it to to like the class or process e it's just class that's more reliable, for example, and gets the name of the control uh, and the the wing title, which is right here, and you yeah. choose a command to to work. So it's made to be intuitive as uh, as much as possible. It's, mm -hmm. it's a, it is a fairly complex tool from the beginning. You see, it's our two main command options, the main buttons to press. So it's a little intimidating in the beginning, but it, it, it has also this search box here. You can find mostly what you want. So type something here, it goes directly to the command you need. And it has from simple increased strokes and Windows, it has image search. This image search is very popular. It's one that gets asked a lot for, for help. So he, uh -huh. it has the, the Tinks GPI routine, so you can grab uh, a screenshot and search it. Set the, the screen area to search. Uh, save to, to variables. Uh, make loops, repeat it. So it, it does, uh, it's, it's, for, it's uh, meant to be an interface for, for auto hotkey for those who not really uh, keen with scripting. Mm -hmm. It has some advanced features too. Like okay. uh, it has flow control. Here you can, you can add if statements and even evaluate expressions, it's something that uses the evolve function. You can uh, create variables, you can even you can assign variables and objects, it supports objects as well. So okay. you can create expressions, you can use functions, uh, you can create your own functions. It has a, a button here, something, one of the latest features, one feature I, I'm very proud of having implemented that you can create your own function, add the uh, parameters, and call it from yours, from, from somewhere else in your, some other macro of yours. And it goes on to advance things like expression and comb objects. You can create comb objects here. Uh, it has uh, an interface for Internet Explorer that's going deprecated now. Uh, for the next version, uh, I plan to add some, make it come a little easier, to, especially uh, starting with Excel, make it an, uh, an interface to make it an, an Excel function easy. And I'm going to explore the possibility of adding Chrome, uh, Chrome automation using the help of uh, Git Dude's script. Yeah, sounds like a great addition. You, you know, one thing that I would say is, uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. 
Oh, sorry. Okay. Um, it reminded me of Geek Dude's. Uh, what was the one Jackie with the um, the blocks? You know the um. Uh, I can't think of the name of it. Um, Cloud AHK, perhaps. Anyway, were you like say the first part? What AHK? Cloud. Cloud HK, yeah, sorry, yeah. So, Rodolfo, even just when you showed like the functions, like the the win list and this and that, it's just an easy way to see what's available as a program. Like, if I'm trying to learn Auto Hotkey, you know, reading the documentation is kind of painful and it's not easy to kind of see what's available, right? This makes it really easy to say, well, hey, what's available here? Oh, wow, look at these. These, What does that do, right? I can easily kind of play with it and see what it does. Yes, exactly. You see, uh, one, one thing I, I, I read a lot on the internet, for, um, I read on Reddit, on the forum, and on, on the Discord channel, is when people come asking for help with my application, they say, oh, I don't use uh, PMC because it writes bad code. Uh, I think what they, oh. they're talking about, it's probably the recorder because the recorder writes a lot of code. It produces a lot of code because it has to record every mouse movement. It has to be precise. So it writes a lot of code. So, but the recorder is not, uh, it's just a feature. It's not what I recommend to use. And uh, when you get to use just commands, here, you, you get what, what, what Jules is talking about. It's easy, easier to, 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 get, to get something working without having to, to go through the documentation to see what parameter is exactly how to use them. So you can use, you can both use the program itself because it, you can add the, the commands and reproduce it using the, the program itself. It's, it's a standalone. Or you can grab the export it to to photo hotkey script and even learn from there. It's not the purpose of the program, but you can use it for that. But uh, then again, uh, exporting photo hotkey is not the main feature. It's just a feature. Yeah, I, I remember the same thing from from the example I, I said earlier with the script writer or whatever it was called. Um, it also kept uh, adding sleeps between each command and it had three different uh, win uh, weight active, uh, win weight, yes, a different couple of commands to make sure that a window that was made to have focus really was in focus. And for a script uh, recorder, that makes a lot of sense because that's what the user expects be happening if they run their macro. So exactly. um, I, I, okay. I totally get that whatever the recorder is recording is not what's supposed to be the final script. Yeah, you can use you you can use the recorder to reproduce inside the program itself, but it's not cool to export a recorded script because it's going to be unmaintainable. So someone is asking in the chat. Can you uh, go ahead and just make a, an example? Uh, what was that, Jackie? There's just someone in the chat. Um, so someone is also asking for an example. And someone is asking for the ready to use com interface items in one of the windows you were sharing. That was cool. Com interface. Let's see if I yeah. can make an example here. Let's see. Um, we have a cell open here. For example, uh, uh, this is really uh, an advanced window. It's not simplified yet. It's a simplification. Something I'm working for the next version. But let's see here. You select, you open this expression come to this window, and select the 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 interface you want to connect to. So let's select Excel here. So you set it a handle name, it's a variable that's going to be the pointer. And you can add a command manually. Let's say X, uh, you can add it in another window here that would be Excel uh, 
and then connect to Chrome and like object, for example. Or you can use this function here to connect to, directly to an open instance. And here, keep reconnecting. So let's say we want to, to write something. Um, the handle is there, so if I remember correctly, I don't need to use the handle here. So let's just say um, CSL. Set it to matrix. So let's set uh, it. Oh, I have tried the the pointer. Pointer, yeah. yeah. It's been a, some time since I used. I was going to ask you if it automatically did that. Um, but yeah. Let's see. Uh, didn't work. So active. So uh, maybe I'm. It's been a lot of time since I tried to uh, write. I would use screen. range. Range like this. Or Jackie knows it's better than me, but yeah, I think range. But just range like this? Yeah. Like, um, oh, just range. Yeah. Range, I think, directly will work. And now, and, and Jackie, you know this better than me from memory, at least. Um, I know there's, like, for the Excel object, there's three levels, right? There's the worksheet, the workbook, I think, and then the overall program. Yeah. I, I, the one okay. he has there is the application object, right? The, the Excel one. So he probably needs to actually connect to the active workbook or um, sheet. I think it it will still connect to the work. the The application will actually still work with range, if I remember correctly. It's pretty forgiving um, on that one. Setting a value. I think yeah. This one yeah. Should be working, but well, that's something that I want to to make easier for the next version. That you don't, you don't have to remember the commands itself. I want to. It, it has. Uh, a tree view where you can select the command and, uh, and just insert it, something that will work. I'm well, sure for, working. When I, I actually, I watched all of your videos and, and when I saw this thing on the comm object, the thing I really thought was really cool was that you just had all the comm, uh, not all, but you had a ton of comm objects listed, right? So it was like, oh, I didn't know there was, what does this one do, right? Like it helps me, you know, you have a great list of things that I could then say, I'm going to go learn that, right? I mean, that is awesome. Yeah. yeah. You see, uh, see, we also got a few questions in the chat here, uh, where um, how many people work with you on this project is one of the questions. Well, there's me, myself, and I. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There have been some contributions in the project, but it's just me. It's just me. <laughs> He's bossing himself around a lot. Um, <laughs> Angel uh, gave an example, if you want to borrow from it, but it was excel.application.activecell.value uh, is, is what he was <laughs> Sorry, come again? Say again. So excel.application.activecell.value. I'm pretty sure I've done it, though, without... The I'm not sure why it's not working cell. because I think I'm pretty sure to sell value should be working, but oh. uh, it's been a long time. I don't know, oh, do you have Com object create? Are you using Com object create? Ali just uh, mentioned I, I wasn't in, looking at your code. You see here, this this button here is supposed to connect to the active object. So yeah, but your code your code on the right there is showing create. Oh, right, that's because that's something I have to to configure again. It's configured here, so I might have to, to fix, because currently this is being configured in the export window. Because, But in fact, this is not really what's, what's happening. But maybe we could okay. try here. And uh, for example, you cannot expression here. It's not exactly. Yeah, this window accepts extraction. It's evaluated with the evolve function. Let's see here. Uh, so, 
application not working i don't know why but maybe something i have to test better <laughs> all right why don't we why don't we shift to an easier example of just using you know i think someone asked for example using the recorder just so they can see what gets generated so maybe like activate note you know use the recorder to activate notepad um set some text the recorder, yeah, it should work. Let's see. You, oh, uh, something, some people got confused when you press the recorder button, it activates the hotkeys to, to, to record. Sometimes this little notification here won't show, so that gets people confused. Let's see, press the default keys F9, starts recording. Okay, here, no. So that's funny. That looks very similar to that uh, notification thing I showed earlier from Scan. <laughs> I, I, I guess you guys are both using the same Windows class notification class. Notification? Oh, this is Windows default. Uh, it's just tray, tray tip. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So wow, see. look at that code. Oh. Holy cow. Yeah, it's not. Cool. That's nice to look, but uh, if you if you want, if you're, if you're not interested in code, then you see, that's, that's just the recorder you want. That should work. Now it's moving on its own. Yeah, it's gonna say a long while, but okay. It seems uh, pretty much like um, yeah. an actual screen recording. So that seems pretty precise. Yeah, it has plus that it generates cool. generates code, but well, it, it's the recorder was not it's it wasn't present in the first version, but it's something that people kept asking a lot. So I try my best. Mm -hmm. hmm. We're all lazy. <laughs> <laughs> well, it has a lot of features, but it's oh, it's too much to to show here, but. I uh, did my best sure. to, to yeah. write a uh, help file. Um, has It goes through every window commands here, trying to, to give at least a brief view of what it should do. Mm -hmm. uh, it has, for example, here you can, um, you can capture keys on, on, the, on this window. You set it here and you type it and it records here without the recorder. Um, you can set contact sensitive when, uh, hotkeys. So uh, just like that. Uh, oh. ha 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 yeah. hash when when activity you, you in, in our hotkey, you can use it here too. So if I set it to just specific window, it's only going this this macro is only going to work. Uh, no, this is one is global, but the the all hot Auto hotkey, all hotkeys are going to work only when this one is active. And hmm. uh, recently I, I've added also macro level context, uh, context sensitive hotkeys. So we can add it here for the specific macro. So you can have different macros that will work on different windows depending on what's set here. It's a cool feature that came in. To be to number one. Yeah, it's nice. Um, we had some uh, questions here. How many hours monthly do you spend nowadays on the project? But you recently just said you had been on a break, but do you still have an idea of when you work on it a lot? How much do you use? Or... Uh, at this project, most it's it, it's mostly been something I did run. On my free time, right? Because it's a free tool. It's not something I can make a lot of profit. Recently, I, 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 I've added some ads to the website. It's uh, making some income, but still I have a daytime job and other personal projects. So uh, nowadays, I think uh, I'd say I'd spend four hours a week on it. Sometimes I when I'm Things are, are cool on, on my, my job. I can spend some more time, but 
it's uh, it's what I can do now and I'm I actually don't have much time for it. So I'm trying my best to release the, the, the new version and we'll probably have it parked for some time yet. Okay. Are, in, I don't know if you actually answered this earlier, but would you be interested in, you know, letting people help you? Do you, do you want people to reach out to you? Uh, in what sense? Uh, it's cold, man. Just support. I mean, it sounds like some people, you know, in general might offer up some time to help solve some things or to troubleshoot or, you know. Well, that um, happens I, I uh, eventually. Uh, some, some people uh, have helped a lot. See, there, there, there's like chosen one of T. He's, he's been finding a lot of bugs and reporting them and even giving some, some help with it to find where, where the bug was. That's something that people help. You can watch in contributions in the GitHub, but uh, it's open source, and so anyone can go there and, and make contributions. But it, it's too much code. I can understand that no, rarely someone's going to 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 look at that and, and start adding stuff because it's complex. It's something. Well, I, I stayed away from projects for four years. Imagine I, when I went back to the code to code and I, I was lost myself. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, absolutely. I do have someone that's uh, that's contacting me to help with the video tutorials because uh, I suck at making videos. <laughs> <laughs> Did and I'm trying to remember. I think somewhere did I see? Do you do you have other link? Is it available in different languages, or yes, or is there some most, translation somewhere? Most of them are Google translated, so they're not very good. Oh, but that's right. You can, okay. you can come here and so like to see some. Some of them have have had revisions from from users. They they can go here in the language editor. You can add your your the language you're using and submit it to me and I update with your revision. That's that's one way. Someone suggested on GitHub to, to get it on a specific platform for, for translation, but I have to use a specific format and I don't have time for that. <laughs> but it has like lots of languages Google translated. Yeah. Someone asked if it's written in Arhati. Yes, it is. You can. The, it's open source code. You can see it all here. It's hundred percent auto hot key written. Yeah, it's a lot of project. And and you mentioned, yeah, you mentioned um, you're getting ready to launch. I think version six, correct? Correct. Is there yeah. anything um, anything big that you're adding or changing? What what's uh, what's going to be like the you know biggest changes in version six? Sure, I can give it a preview, and I have a cool. to do list here. I'm not sure I'm going to reach everything <laughs> here, but it's there. <laughs> Let's see. Um, So first thing I added was uh, an alternative view for uh, the, the list view. So I had this option to see it as a three view, three view. <laughs> so for people who have lots of, of macros on their projects, it might be easier to just watch it in this mode and you can even drag and drop. This is something you you ask when on, on, on we're talking about my my LV roles class that, that allows me to, to do this drag and drop that's not working mm -hmm. for some reason here. Uh, and I created also a drag and drop function for three views. That's on the on, on the forum as well. Oh, that's right. Yeah, so this is, uh, not sure. Correct me if I'm wrong, John, webinar on the, the, that yeah. list. 
right? Yeah, we were very impressed with with functionality. Very cool. Yeah, that does a lot of. Uh, it was designed specifically for PMC, and it does most of the things that I, I can do in this window is using that class. So like move, cut, and paste all, the, and, and especially the drag function, all that is done with that class. So I created a simple version, which is just a drag and drop function. It doesn't have all those features, but it can also, it's something that was missing from the form and what's available. It's something I want to uh, add in as a feature in the next version. Uh, what I'm currently working on is this, the, what I was talking about, the, the window to facilitate Excel components, so uh, Excel com. So it's going, there is, this is like the advanced view. So you have the, the, the properties and functions here. For example, you have active cell value. It's something I was trying to do there and didn't work for some reason. So just add it here, and then you can get or set the value. Whatever. So it should generate the code for you. Let's try again the project here. So I do so. Well, I was trying to find best way to, to, to make it easier. I'm not sure how many people use the Excel interface, but it, for me, it's something very cool. And automated, so. It's a generally. pretty, you know, I have a lot of Excel tutorials on my website and they get pretty good traffic. I think Excel in general is a pretty you know, good topic. Yeah, this is not finished yet. I'm not sure if it's going to work. But it's the first step. So something I have to test why it's not connecting to this instance specifically, but it should be working. And uh, other thing is to replace Internet Explorer with Chrome, but I haven't even started yet with GitDude's script. I just test it quickly to work, but I haven't tried to integrate it yet. And other things I was thinking about, uh, yeah. for example, uh, this HTTP uh, requests. Uh, someone asked for Java bridge integration. I haven't checked it yet. Uh, other things here, an alternative post share engine. But for, to, for the release, I'm just focusing on the Excel and Chrome automation. If I can get that, I'm going to release as version six. If uh, if you really start going down the building in Chrome to this, um, I'll I'll volunteer Isaiah's time um, for like a half a day easily, or if you want to just pick his brain. He's done a lot with it, so and he's a very advanced programmer, so he could give you some really good, you know, uh, just overviews of of what what to avoid or what to start with or whatever. But um, I'm happy to help contribute to help you with with that because it's. It's it's a it's a lot, right, Isaiah? Yeah, it is. Uh, even though it is very easy to grasp what to do, as soon as you get the basics of it, everything else just flows because there's like four functions or three. The only thing that it has. So with these four functions, you can do everything. The only thing is that you need to know a little bit of JavaScript if you're gonna send very advanced stuff. But even if you don't know that, you can work with it very easily. Yeah, uh, uh, the. the... The challenge, I think, it's to make it as abstract as possible for the user, so it doesn't have to deal with code. So it just grabs the interface and makes it really intuitive to to open a page or click somewhere. Oh yeah, those kind of things are going to be easy to make programmatically. And as soon as you know the basics of clicking, scrolling, or going, this, you know, those kind of things, uh, the when the user just says what he wants to do. For you as a programmer to translate it to the 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 object itself, the the library, right? It's going to be very easy for you to kind of translate. So that. I accept the help. It's going to to be so. Just have to find. 
find time. I, I, I have a lot of things to do. <laughs> well, we got there. Yes, that's cool. I also, it's just such a shame that body is dying. Say again? I, I'm sorry. I was just saying it's just not, IE was so easy to automate and now it's dying so fast too. Like it's ridiculous. Uh, but it was such an easy thing to, to program does. with and, and it's going back. Yeah, when you, when you show people what, what can be done programmatically with Internet Explorer, they, they jaw, their jaw drop because it's amazing. <laughs> but... yeah. So you want to ask anything else about the program? Want to... No. Someone asked how, how many total lines of code um, are currently in the, you know, how many total lines is it if you look at it wholly? I don't know. The main script has see, 17,000, but you get, there are a lot of libs as well. Some of I don't know, they're very large. Some of them are not mine, some of them are, I get from, from other users' contribution, but some of them are my code series. More than 1,000 here. This Do you have a way in VS Code to pack it all up and combine it automatically? I Is that probably correct? say around 19,000, 20,000, 20 K, around that. <laughs> But you see, I, 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 that's the micro. I, I like to, to keep the code very clean. So I, I have, I skip lines a lot of the, this kind of, of indentation because this, this is not something I use nowadays because now mostly I, I program in Java and JavaScript, but it's something I took, uh, I took from, from the auto hotkey help file. It was written right. mostly like that. So uh, most of the, the syntax I use in code and the code that's exported is inspired and based on the auto hotkey help file because that's what, where I started programming. I learned from that. Yeah. So you see a lot of uh, uppercase variables, uh, kind of stuff that's not really common for programming. No, but um, do, you, do you happen to know? I'm sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, Isaiah. No, I was just going to say that. Oh, that I, I makes... was going to ask you. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it's my internet. It's so slow. <laughs> no, I was just going to comment on the fact that then uh, the way how he's doing it, it makes it so clear later on to figure out. Now, try to find your way in 17,000 lines of code. And this helps tremendously. Like it makes a huge difference. Yeah, that was it's, awesome. especially when you don't have some some facilities of, of EDE, for example, finding th this. Now I can. Th there are some things that I can that I can do here with with this uh, extension for VS Code that helps a lot. But uh, uh, um, until version five, I was I was using this. This yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. code. See, there were some scripts to, to, to help, but wow, it's hard to find things. So I, I try to make uh, write long variable names, things that make sense. That's easy to do a control F and find it because otherwise, I'm yeah, just... it was gonna be a nightmare. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, and so this... Joe, he is uh, actually typing in his question here. Uh, do most people that use uh, Pullover's Macro Creator know AutoHotKey at all? Or are they starting new or? No, no, know? most of the users that, that, that come to, to find it are late people that know nothing about programming. Because they, you see, if you, if you know AutoHotKey, you're probably gonna have your way, your syntax, your way of, of writing your preferences. Uh, people who, who come to, to PMC, they, they want something to mostly to automate their, their daily lives at work or to use with uh, games. So they don't know much about programming. They're just, I think, 
people who use all of what you can see are just few. You can you, you can notice that from from forum from Discord channel. There's just one guy there that that that, that advocates for for PMC. <laughs> the other guys like, oh, don't use I, I never used it. <laughs> Yeah, because as you said yourself, what is it? Was it three thousand a week, or what was it? Something like 3, that. Week, yeah. yeah. So, so if we only see a, a topic or two, and and a few on the chat on Discord and stuff like that, yeah, yeah, it's it's not many that seek out the Arhati community for help with the uh, PMC. Do you? Do we have any kind of community places, any forums, any Facebook groups or stuff? No, um, I, I suggest people to use the forum. You know, we have, we have this thread here that's been going for a long time. See, uh, people at the forum, I, th I think it was Tank, he was nice enough to, to give me a specific forum for, mm -hmm. for it. Yeah, I'm so, seeing it there at the top, yeah. Yes, yeah, so yeah. So it's easier because people can can make uh, make a, a thread to ask something specific for PMC. So that's that was very kind of him uh, because he, before that I just had this thread. So questions went a lot here. Some people ask uh, send uh, make ask questions on GitHub. Some people send me email. Some people write a post. In, in the website, that's the worst place to ask for help. Mm -hmm. So I recommend people to use the form because other people can, can help you. I'm not always available. And yeah, my answer, if I answer someone else's answer, it can be helpful for other people. If I just answer him via, via email, he's the only one who's gonna get benefit. So I don't no. always answer emails. R Rodolfo, you laugh, I literally, like said that exact thing this morning, someone, I had answered a question, they reposted the exact same question again. And I'm like, why are you posting this a second time? Like I answered this and he said, well, I'll PM you. Cause I have a mom. I'm like, I, I don't want to PM. I'm like, I don't have time to help people one off. I don't mind helping people that everyone can benefit, but if we take it offline, you know, no one can benefit like, except for you. And that's, you know, I don't have time for that, unfortunately. Right. So yeah. yeah. I, it's, it's funny, but sometimes if it's something simple, I even answer that him for the email. No, you can't do that. No, you can't do that. But not much than that. I'm not going to give him script examples by via email. No, I don't do that. Use the form. Well, it's 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 there in, in my contact page in the website. It's it's written there. I recommend you. I highly recommend you use the form. So, but it, it's. It's just because well, it's not something that I, that I'm, it's not my main preoccupation in my day to see. It's something I, I do because I like it, but it's not my job, so. Yeah. yeah. Here's the other really big thing Jackie and I talk a lot about is unless you actually try and do it yourself, if someone gives you the code or that, you never, you're never going to learn, right? Yeah. So. That's the other reason why I don't usually actually give the answer. I'll point them in a direction. You could try this. You could try that. But it's it's very important that they actually put in the effort, and that's how they learn, right? If you don't put in the effort, you never learn, and then you just keep bugging people for you know everything. I, you I, know what I, happens a lot. You you give him it, when you give him the answer. You give him an example. You take the time to write a code, and he never even thanks you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And actually, I was uh, I was talking about that specific thing, Joe, regarding when you put in the effort to think about the problem, when somebody tells you, uh, at least, you know, to point in the right direction, or you find the answer, then you say this, aha, and then it clicks. But if you ask, and I answer, you never get this aha thing, and you're going to forget it right next, in the next five minutes, you forget about that. So yeah, I never, as Joe, I never really just give the answer unless it's something that is time sensitive. In any other case, well, this is where you can look for it, you know? You see, there's, there's this other side because when I was learning AutoHotKey, I was learning to program, that's how 
it's how I learned was helping people at the forum. So I went to the, the Ask for Help forum and I searched for, for uh, questions that I could help. And, and by helping them, I learned to script. That's yeah. something that, that's something else. It's different. It was, uh, it was my biggest tip as well. If, if you're trying to learn it, try and find something, someone you can help. Find them on your level. If you're using the forum, fair enough, scan the topics, see if someone is searching for help with something that is maybe at the, the forefront of what you're capable of. So then you can push yourself. But yeah, just keep trying to help people with stuff that you know or think you know. And that's also one of the reasons we're pushing this mentor mentee thing uh, with Joe, just because um, you, you actually have a great way to find someone who wants to get help and you'll be able to help them as best you can. So yeah, it, it's a great way of actually getting better is to teach the thing. I think we've got another question. Um, can you tell us what you do for a living? I mean, in particular, do you use a hotkey as your job? So he, he wants to know if you program in a hotkey for a living. I am a programmer, that's what I do for a living, but I, I work for companies writing mostly in Java right now. So I don't even use Windows very often, uh, mostly on Linux all the time. Uh, our hotkey, uh, I had some, some particular scripts here I used for years uh, that I was helping me. But now that I, that I code for a living, I, I don't have much use for, for them. So the ID does everything. So uh, in that, and sites, the time that I'm working on some project, uh, uh, I'm not using computer. Uh, I come to Windows to code for uh, to code PMC mostly. That's what I use it for, and then I use my my personal scripts here. But I don't don't use our hotkey for work. Uh, I guess since I. I, I I, I did. I used more when I wasn't working as a coder. Not a coder user. <laughs> kind of. You would would you say that uh, PMC help you help you uh, obtain the job or the career that you have today? Sure, it's my my most. It's it it's my my business card. It's it's uh, something that's the probably the, the among. It's category as a free tool. It's the most used worldwide. It's used by companies like IBM. Uh, I got contacted by some people in in Colombia at the Renault. They're using. Uh, they're, they're even uh, made classes and events to to teach about automation, featuring my program. And that's something that it's. It's quite big at some, some place. So, so there are a lot of companies using it. Yeah, but um, as you said yourself, you have 10,000 plus downloads a month, right? So, so fair enough, it's been out there for years. So yeah, it sounds like a great thing. Yeah, it's, it's uh, you see, uh, uh, I, although I have little time to, to, to write it, it's still some, my, my passion. I, it's it's my first my first big project, and I put a lot of effort and love in that. And I'll, and it wouldn't be possible also without the help from people in the forum. There are amazing scripts by right? people like you see some legends of a lot of key just me scan. They made things so amazing that I use it there. And well, I love that community. It's auto key community is different. You see when I when I ask it at other places. Uh, for help, they would, they would tell me to go, oh, go do a tutorial, watch a tutorial, go the one help her. But it's not like that. On all that kid, we really help each other. Yeah, uh, yeah, that, that is really nice. It is, that's for sure. I don't know if Joe had any more on the deck. I don't remember. Uh, anybody have any other questions? 
Yeah, that's too hard to actually uh, understand. understand. Yeah. It's cutting off. Yeah. Okay. So I do see the future of the project. Uh, I plan. I wasn't actually planning to, to to release this major version. I, I even made a post that said that I was going to fix bugs and add something here and there. But well, I couldn't. I couldn't help myself. And I thought oh, this is cool. This is cool. Maybe I could help here. Okay. I, I, now that I, I have uh, some more free time, that because the past four years I was working so much, so much on so many things I didn't have time. Now I'm, I'm working on a job that I was more flexible, I'm working from home, so it's no more, more easier. So I plan to release this version, version six, this or next month, add some new features later that I have on my to-do list. And from then I, I'm just going to maintain it, fix bugs, but probably won't add many more big features. Unless I change my mind, but for now, <laughs> I'm going to start because I want to work on other personal projects. I want to have time to to release some some mobile application, mobile app, something, uh, other commercial tools. Of course, MC. I, I trying to make some money out of it now uh, with ads, but it's going to stay free. That's that's a prerogative that I have from the beginning. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh most people would probably also be happy with it staying free as it is and open source and all that, yeah. So what is the function you are most proud of, MC? Mm, that's a hard thing. Well, I think the, the, the ability to create your user-defined function, that was really something that I, 